Hey everybody, I've been sitting here trying to shoot a video about old tank syndrome, but what really seems to be the important point to me is how to avoid old tank syndrome. Most of my videos I try to gear towards the beginner and somebody that's just coming up in the hobby and has some questions. So for those people, you're probably not at the point where you've already got old tank syndrome and we can talk about what it actually is and its symptoms and so on and so forth uh, later, perhaps even in another video. But to talk about how to avoid old tank syndrome is a lot more cut and dry. It's pretty easy to do. I know some people talk about having this sort of happen as though it's a foregone conclusion and there's nothing you can do about it, but that's not the case. It's very, very easy to avoid old tank syndrome, and that is simply by doing proper maintenance. It's as easy as that. It really is. Now, when I say proper maintenance, let's get into a little bit of the fine detail about what proper maintenance is. And I want to talk specifically about nitrates, my old friend nitrates. As much as I talk about nitrates not being particularly harmful to your fish, that's only in reasonable amounts. We'll say, I'll go crazy and say under 100 parts per million or even under 80 parts per million or whatever. But the important thing is, is not to let them continually build up and build up and build up. And that's where testing comes in and testing is important. So what I mean is if you've got say 40 parts per million nitrates and you do a water change once a week. At 40 parts per million, if you do a water change and you reduce it to 30 parts per million, and then the following week you check again and you're now up to 45 parts per million, and you do the same size water change, the next week you check it you're going to be up to 50 parts per million. And so each water change, the nitrates are going to get a little further ahead of you and further ahead of you and further ahead of you, and eventually they're going to build up to intolerable levels. So it's important to check that at least until you've established a baseline where you know, okay, over this period of time I get this much nitrate buildup, I have to do this much water change, and then that brings us back to this point. And we can let that climb start again. So as long as you maintain it, under, we'll say again, 80 parts per million if you want to go crazy on the high side there. As long as it stays under that and you don't check it and it's there and then the next time you check it it's at 90 parts per million and then it's at 100 parts per million, that's where you go wrong and that's where you can run into old tank syndrome eventually. Even though you're doing maintenance and you're doing regular water changes, you're still going to run into the problem of buildup of everything. Because if your nitrates are building up, so are our phosphates, so are hormones, so are bacteria. All of that stuff is still going on in your tank. The nitrates are simply a good way to so, sort of use the nitrates as a proxy. You can check all of those things by checking the nitrates. If that number keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that's a clear indication that you're not doing thorough enough or large enough or frequent enough water changes. You don't necessarily want to do really big water changes depending on your water chemistry, so you may have to do more frequent, smaller water changes. But keeping an eye on that number to make sure it's not gradually getting away from you is important. As far as I'm concerned, once you've sort of established a routine and you know how your tank functions, testing's not a regular thing that even I do in my tanks once a month, once every six weeks, just to kind of keep an eye on it and make sure it's not getting away from you is important. Because as old tank syndrome begins to develop, it can either do this very slowly over time and you begin having problems with your tank, or everything can be just smooth as could be and then one day your tank falls off a cliff and everything just collapses and crashes and you start having all kinds of problems and you don't know what's going on. And that can be old tank syndrome which is caused by improper maintenance. So typically when people think of the old tank syndrome they think of a really really under maintained or a non maintained tank. One that simply gets the glass wiped down and the water topped off but never really gets any water changes. Um, even getting in there and changing the filter regularly is not the same as doing a water change. You've got to make sure you're staying ahead of the buildup. And when I say the buildup I just mean the buildup of everything. Because while you've got some stuff that's building up, like nitrate and phosphate and hormones and bacteria, you've got other stuff that's decreasing and breaking down, such as your water's mineralization, um, the redox capacity, the 
it's the hardness will begin to decrease over time as the pH starts to drop, as the nitrate builds, that actually lowers your pH. When the pH gets too low, you can start having issues with your nitrogen cycle. That can cause a buildup of nitrite in the tank. Once you get below a certain pH, the ammonia doesn't become an issue. But if your nitrogen cycle is not dealing with the ammonia and it's just building up in the tank, it's going to be ammonium and you're going to have a buildup of nitrite and you just start having problem after problem after problem and this is simply because you're not doing proper maintenance over time so to avoid all that and to avoid all those problems just do proper maintenance that's it that's as simple as that do water changes that are large enough that your nitrates stay within whatever window you've established is what's acceptable for you if you've got nitrates in your groundwater if you've got a heavily stocked tank and you know they're always kind of high around 60 parts per million you don't have to set unrealistic expectations for yourself you don't have to fight to get your nitrates down to 20 parts per million but if they usually sit around 60 you know between 40 and 60 or somewhere in there keep them there when you do your water changes, make sure when you're done your water change, you've brought that number back down below your original starting point. And that will also be bringing down the phosphates. It'll be removing a volume of, you know, all the other stuff I'm talking about, the hormones and the bacteria and all that stuff will be coming out. Plus, you'll be putting back a large enough volume of water that you'll replenish your water's mineralization, you'll stabilize the pH, you'll keep the general hardness where it needs to be, you'll keep your carbonate hardness where it needs to be, and just on that regular cycle of water changes to keep your tank stable, it's as simple as that and you'll never have to worry about old tank syndrome. So I've got a tank sitting right over here that is eight years old, it's got fish in there that are seven years old, and it doesn't even have real gravel in it, it's got that faux plastic you know, dense foam gravel that they sell, you know, with the different colors and all that kind of stuff. And that's it. That's all that's on the bottom. And it's only about an inch deep. I've got a few rocks in there, a couple little plants. And it's my most stable tank ever. It just ticks over like a clock. And so, again, just do basic maintenance, basic simple water changes, and you'll never have to worry about old tank syndrome cropping up in your tank. So I hope that was helpful. Uh, if you want to hear a video in more depth about old tank syndrome and how that occurs over time or whatever, then let me know and we can talk about that in the future. But I think avoiding old tank syndrome is the much, much easier way to deal with it. So thanks again. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you're subscribed, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.